buildings already been and what have I learned along the way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, my film journey began in the School of Architecture and it began uh, unbeknownst to me. I kind of started making animations. I didn't know I was making animations. Uh, it was just this impulsive thing. Uh, which led me to leave the School of Architecture and then uh, yeah I came to the film group around like 2010, 2011 uh, and I got a mosaic fund and made my first film and so yeah a lot of my first films that I was making at the time were uh, me discovering analog film, animations, kind of discovering myself as an animator and learning how to operate a Bolex camera uh, and kind of that, developing that relationship with the camera. I think it's like, yeah, it's interesting that you like mentioned career because it's like I don't, uh, I'm very fortunate that I guess I do have a sort of career that I, I'm just making this stuff and I am given what I need to be supported. It just comes through and I can just keep focusing on, you know, the work. But it's like I really approach it as like a discipline. It's, it's very different for me. So... I think that's something that is key into how I operate and why I operate. It's like, um, yeah, and so this inquisitiveness was sort of built here early at the film group and kind of, I think, the fact that I started making films uh, as an animator is sort of at the core also of everything I do. So, you know, I started animating when I was studying architecture and kind of really became about the constraints of being a human being. <laughs> You know, within these three-dimensional boxes, which we call like buildings and yeah. animation, though it was like, oh, you could just do whatever. You're mad, you know. You're a magician, so uh, so yeah. Kind of, it comes from this. It comes from this. It comes from the relationship I have to my exterior world and all this stuff. So it's kind of uh, all of these questions and things kind of have led me to where I am now. And you know, I just did a feature-length film, and it kind of what is a huge leap from sort of these weirdo animations I was doing by myself, you know, cutting out little pieces of film and being a weirdo loner and, <laughs> uh, you know, but those impulses and everything I learned from, you know, taking an X-Acto knife to uh, a film strip, which sort of was my first act as a filmmaker, which I think is pretty... Uh, which I think was a, it's kind of a huge thing when I think back on it in such a kind of like a de defining moment into like how I behave in, as you know in cinema and kind of my role in cinema uh, to disrupt it. Yeah, Saint Anne came out of me sort of thinking about my current space and you know this landscape of cinema filmmaking uh, and kind of wanting to broaden out like I had made my film Domus and it really made me feel like I could take something on that was bigger um, and I really wanted to shift gears because uh, Domus really kind of, yeah, was just like kind of closing of a chapter in many ways. Um, and I had a lot of questions about, you know, how to make a film. Like I had sort of been on the fringe of the industry, been on the fringe of all these sort of things which, you know, you kind of have to like achieve in this weird game of filmmaker game, you know, and uh, questioning these things, questioning how we make films, uh, questioning, you know, how the things I had accepted becoming a filmmaker and, um, and questioning, you know, uh, cinematic language and identity, you know, a lot of, a lot of the core sort of driving facets of St. Anne was sort of me really reflecting on, you know, who I am and sort of this cinematic world which kind of encompasses all the nuanced facets of who I am, you know, and a woman, Métis, grew up rural, a sister, you know, an auntie, an artist, all these things, you know, um, and not this like one boxed in idea. Um, because that has been always my life, is being kind of sort of on the outside of everything, you know? Uh, and so it's like, what that outsideness, like, the finding the power in that and the way to express oneself, you know? And, uh, yeah, and then you have St. Anne, which is like super weirdo film, you know? <laughs> and it also came out of collaborating, so it was like, 
for the first time in my life, I was confronted with how, you know, needing to put myself out there, needing to build relationships. And so, uh, you know, 100% this film came out of collaboration. I could have not have done it, you know, by myself. Um, however, <laughs> I, you know, I was kind of, you know, yeah, like you said, I, I was acting in, in it and that just came out of the constraints of the film. And, uh... It was like, yeah, I'm, I, I will always be available and I will, you know, will not take an acting fee and <laughs> help the budget. And, um, you know, but even me as an actor, like so many times, like working with Christian Church, like because I love being behind the camera, like I, I would, would stick Christian and be like her silhouette or her hands, you know? And so it's like me, but it wasn't me. It was like, so we just added another layer of, you know, uh, I don't even know what it is about making film, you know, it's just, uh, so, yeah, collaboration is, like, was super important, and it's, like, a super ex exciting part of my life, you know, I never thought that I'd be very excited about collaborating with others, because I was making film from such an insular place for so many years, you know. Right. I like to think that every film I make is about the film being made, and, you know, uh, somebody who my door at Ackerman, you know, uh, great animator, mentor of mine, you know, and he also thinks that, you know, we both kind of said this at the same time one day, it's like every film is a story about, and so Kinship, yeah, 100%, like both in the crew, like my sisters, you know, Charlene Moore, Amanda Kinzierski, Christian Church, Jeanette Hugo, like everybody, you know, like, you know, is Isabelle and her mom Chantal and Dolores, who's still in my, you know, every still in my life was still kind of this group, but also just, you know, on screen, it's like, those are my cousins, that's my godfather, that's my dad, that's my niece, my brother, you know. Yeah, St. Anne came up about this moment where I was freaking out in crisis, you know, just taking on this huge thing, and, uh, <laughs> you know, having these weird Werner Herzog sort of moments, like, it's all gonna fall apart, and, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and, and, you know, my family, my cousins were the first to be like, come on, like, you need, you know, and so, and everything just came out naturally, you know, and that was a big part about me going on, you know, being in front of the camera, so much of it was just natural, it was like, me laughing, having some laughs with my cousins, you know. Like, yeah, on the topic of co collaboration, you know, and like, what I did with St. Anne, you know, you have mentioned, is, was it a no-brainer, and frankly, frankly, like, it, it wasn't a no-brainer, you know, when I think about, Again, 2010, 2011, 2012, when I'm here at the film group, like, Heidi Phillips, my mentor, but she was the only other one around, like, it was kind of a very significant, prominent culture, dominating culture, um, and me kind of being an outsider to that was just kind of, you feel grateful to be accepted, right? So you just kind of don't disrupt it so much, and you just kind of normalize things, and... And then look, and then I was making work privately. I think that was a very signal to sort of like what was happening around me. The fact that I was like secretly making stuff, kind of. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a no-brainer because it was just you kind of get engulfed in this world, and then uh, you know after years of whatever, you know, you start to kind of dig internally, and you kind of start to see what's going on, and you know, it felt like after. A certain time like Heidi was the only friend I had you know because it's just like these aren't sustainable relationships mm -hmm. especially if you're kind of like me like to disrupt things and whatever and so yeah just rebuilt you know and through Heidi you know when I met my one of my closest friends Divya Mera you know Freya Olofsson started hanging out with Amanda Kinzierski at the film group then I met Charlene Moore you know and uh really found myself working on like a variety of like hyper interesting you know projects involving storytelling and image making you know i went to india with divya and you know uh she, I met emily atkins from saskatoon who's a good friend of mine you know and so and it was just really i think that was a shifting moment and i think you know it's from them who i i draw inspiration and i think a lot of the ways that i work with the crew now and like think through projects and think of the ethics and think of the money and all that kind of stuff comes from working with these amazing artists you know and it's like and everybody's like I'm finding is like has their own way of telling their stories of making their images and the one thing that is in common though is that everything is intimate everything is like intimately touched across all these you know diverse artist forms and directors artists you know it's like everything is so intimate uh, which is super interesting, you know, and like really beautiful. Yeah. 
yeah, how was my experience at TIFF and how was receiving Best Canadian? Uh, yeah, it was, it was funny, like, because, like, literally a couple of days before they announced that we had received the, the prize, um, which was a shock to me. I think it was a shock to everybody, but uh, I had I introduced the film at TIFF and I was talking about Manitoba and I was talking about my relationship to Manitoba and how the film really kind of comes around about this relationship. And I think I, like at one point I was like, said that, you know, like, I'm not Canadian. Yeah. I'm Manitoba, I'm Manitoba and I like literally don't give a shit about Canada, you know? And then a couple days later, it's like best Canadian film. And you know, now <laughs> we are the best Canadian yeah. film. It's a, uh, it's really funny. <laughs> Um, but always still it's like, yeah, it's, you know, I'm grateful, you know, we've got cash to put into whatever the hell I make next. Yeah. And I just, I think like overall, like I hope like, yeah, people take inspiration from it. Cause like St. Anne was this sort of like weird, the weird rogue movie, you know, it really came outside of every single accepted system or structure, which, you know, one is th made to believe one needs in order to kind of achieve any sort of whatever, you know, no budget, uh, no distributor, no production company, no industrial support, no industrial interest, you know? And it came from me, this sort of like outsider person who, you know, I, we were talking earlier, it's like, I'm not really into networking, like I'm really about the work, you know? Um, so yeah, I think it's like, it's kind of like, well, it's pretty crazy, you know, it was never, I never imagined it, but I just, yeah, I just hope that I kind of, you know, other people start doing what they want.